Yes. Hi guys, good evening. This is Dr. Jenny Yusuf, physical therapist and doctor of physical therapy, board certified clinical specialist in geriatrics, and the current vice chair of Academy of Physical Therapy Association in Global Health in Active Aging Adults. So it is a special interest group in the Academy of Physical Therapy and the founder of Fishgen PT and Wellness. So welcome. So it's another thanks God it's Thursday, another innovator. So if you are in Philippines, Mabuhay. If you're in Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, salam alaikum guys. And Canada, uh, maybe bonjour. <laughs> and then also here in America, good evening and wherever you are. I appreciate you listening to us. Today for our Thanks God is Thursday, great innovator, entrepreneur, and a physical therapist. He's a clinician, he's a physical therapist, and a PhD. He is a fellow of the Academy of Physical Therapy and also an occupy uh, what we call this orthopedic clinical specialist. He's a board certified uh, uh, orthopedic clinical specialist. So that's really amazing because he also has uh, 20 years, I think, military service and background. And this he is the CEO and founder, co-founder of the EIM and also Confluent Health Partners. Lots, lots of achievements here. If you will hear the Confluent Health, it's very huge. It's more than 520 outpatient clinics in more than 30 plus states. Amazing, amazing. And the evidence in motion, if you're a physical therapist, you know it already. We ha They have specializations, CEUs, and also lots of educational materials. So without further ado, we, I would like to introduce Dr. John Childs. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's a privilege uh, to be here. You are welcome, John. So thank you so much. So if I missed something, on my introduction, I'm sure I have. Can you tell us more about yourself? I know you're in Texas right now. So thank you so much for this privilege. So tell us more what I miss and about your achievements and also your different um, EIM, the Confluent Health, something like that, John. Well, first of all, you uh, you had a very generous introduction. So I don't know that you missed uh, really a whole lot, but thank you for that generous uh, introduction. Um, you know, I was born and raised in the deep south of the United States. I was born in the state of Alabama, uh, went to the Air Force Academy for my undergraduate, um, was in the military, uh, as was alluded to, for 20 years, um, was also a, an entrepreneur at heart uh, and started a number of, of uh, companies uh, with a number of good partners uh, in various industries, outpatient clinics, Evidence in Motion, which is our educational company, and Fit for Work, uh, which is our company. We partner with a lot of employers around the country in helping them mitigate against workers' compensation, basically keeping employees, uh, you know, safe. And so I just want to say thank you. I think most of my relationships probably to those of you who will be listening listening to this is through Evidence in Motion. And so, wow, it's really a privilege to uh, to be speaking with each of you, um, you know, raising and, and the level of care around the entire world is a huge part of what we do uh, at EIM. And so uh, we've always from day one embraced uh, the international uh, therapists, certainly um, therapists that live in the United States as well. Um, but wow, really being able to bring physical therapy to the entire world at the highest quality um, and those of you who are part of this audience are uh, really forward thinkers. And I just want to say thanks for, um, you know, your commitment uh, to being the very best at what you do. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm sure they're listening right now. And everybody are so inspired to up themselves, you know, invest in themselves. So EIM is really very, very timely and very important to get all our resources. If you will check, guys, the EIM in the link that we will provide it, um, they have a specialization preparation for the different certifications you have. And they have also those kinds of 
um, OCS, GCS preparation, or the certification itself, if you want to do some doctorate, things like that. And tell us more um, quickly, Dr. Uh, John. So your physical therapist, how did you come up and what inspires you to be more on, on the entrepreneur side? And how many years is EIM before it becomes huge like this? Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great question. So, um, you know, I was in the Air Force as a physical therapist. I was in clinical practice for three or four years, uh, and then did my uh, PhD at the University of Pittsburgh, um, and had the real privilege of being a part of a great research team there and being mentored uh, by some some of the best and brightest uh, at what we do. I um, you know, was able to learn how to publish and how to write grants and, and, you know, but, but I thought I was sort of living in an ivory tower where I was just an academic and not really, uh, you know, embracing my former days as a clinician. Uh, and so I thought there was an opportunity to create educational programming that could help us take the very best and latest of knowledge and research and translate that into real-time sort of educational nuggets, if you will, that would help clinicians be a better clinician in clinical practice. Um, and so we started off developing, um, you know, weekend courses. Those weekend courses, um, you know, turned into certification. Certifications turned into residencies. Residencies turned into fellowships. And we created these longer and longer, you know, programs to really, uh, you know, equip therapists that wanted to practice at the top of their license to be the very best at what they did to deliver the highest quality evidence-based, you know, care to their, to their patients. So, you know, we started in call it 2004, 2005, and, you know, fast forward, you know, 15, 20 years later, and, you know, here we are, and, and have the privilege of, of serving, you know, therapists really around, around the world. And it's a mission for us. Um, you know, obviously we're a, you know, private entity. We, you know, we try to make money when we can, but wow, you know, uh, you know, equipping therapists to be the best at what they do. Um, that's the heartbeat of who we are at EIM. Yes. So that's really good when you say the growth from specialization, certification, residency, fellows, you know, so you really see the progress of its clinicians. And then that's also built like, just like you, physical therapist, and you have a background of MBA. So that's why you're in the business industry. So that's really good. And thank you so much for building this because it it really inspired us to do more. And whatever we knew, I keep telling to my uh, colleagues, why well, you keep doing seminars and then certifications. And I'm only five years in America at that time. And then I told them, because whatever we invest in yourself, whatever you knew is for your clients. And they feel and know that you know something, you know, and the results are there. Yes. Yeah, yes. no, absolutely. Yes. And then how about the confluent health? So is it like you say also the fit to work for the workman's comp? So what is the difference of the confluent health to the typical outpatients we have in America? Yeah, that's a great question. So there were a number of us that were part of uh, founding or co-founding a number of different uh, sort of industries related to, to physical and occupational therapy. Uh, the outpatient clinics are, um, you know, one part of the business. EIM is a second part of the business. That's the educational side of the business. And then Fit for Work was a separate, um, you know, employer-driven uh, business. And, you know, all of these businesses sort of operated independently for a number of years. But in 2014, you know, we really saw the opportunity to put those individual businesses together up underneath a parent company of, of Confluent uh, Health. And some of you may know uh, Larry Benz, he's our president and CEO of Confluent, but that's our, that's our parent company. Um, that's sort of the umbrella organization um, that kind of houses these three sort of distinct businesses of service delivery in our outpatient clinics, educational um, you know, delivery, as well as 
um, on-site workplace uh, healthcare services. And that's a combination that's very unique uh, in the industry, um, you know, and something that we're really, uh, really proud of. All right. Thank you so much. So if ever we will speak, uh, we have lots of clinicians listening right now. They want to follow your footsteps, your um, business and entrepreneur mindsets. What will be your tips for our clinicians looking forward to be like in their um, certification, who wants to grow more? So what will be their first steps? Of course, they're confused. What do I need to do? Is it OCS? geriatric you know yeah. so what will be your tips for these clinicians right now well clearly uh being a very eager curious learner is is key to it now, um, when i first graduated um, there wasn't an eim that offered certifications and residencies and fellowships so what i did was travel around the country in my case the united states to to every weekend going to a different course to try to learn more about how to be the best um, and lo and behold, uh, when you're really curious and you seek opportunities to learn, you find yourself in environments with other peers who are similar to you, who are also very curious and very eager to learn. And pretty soon, I, I didn't do this intentionally, but had sort of a network of peers that uh, was as eager and hungry as I was. And it's the collective uh, sort of intelligence of that group um, that is what, you know, helped me be a part of what I'm part of now. It's not something that I accomplished at all by myself, um, but I simply put myself in environments where there were other people like me uh, that wanted to be part of something bigger than themselves. Um, and that's really the story of Confluent is a lot of really curious, motivated, you know, learners uh, that want to be part of something bigger than themselves. And so I think my advice would be to um, continue to learn, uh, continue to stay humble and continue to surround yourself uh, with individuals that are smarter than you and be part of a team. Um, and that's where, to me, a lot of the, you know, greatest innovation sort of happen in any any industry uh, but certainly it's it's worked in in healthcare at least for me that's true and that's the typical what we say as you are the you are the five per, what do you call that john like you are one of the five person around you something like that i forgot the saying yeah. so choose the best five persons around you i like when you say you need to be the lowest in the group because you need to be around the smartest people yeah. and then you so learn you, something from them right you you, you want to be the dumbest person in the room i mean that's, yeah. that's you know and if, if your if ego you keep talking yeah if you're if your ego can't handle uh being the dumbest person in the room it's unlikely that you're going to accomplish much um you know, uh, you, you learn from people that are wiser than you, older than you, smarter than you. And so you have to be willing to be mentored and surround yourself with people uh, that will push you to be your very best. Yes, that's true. And always surround with positive people, positive yes. energy that will push you, you know. So that's really good um, tip there. So how about your challenges with all those success? Um, what do you think are the challenges that motivate you still um, to be in this kind of level where you are right now? Yeah, I mean, I think the challenges are, uh, it probably won't surprise anyone, you know, to achieve, uh, you know, success and, and accomplish, um, you know, significant um, you know, achievements, you know, you're going to, you're going to work a lot. And so you're going to have to have a spouse and children and your family is going to have to be understanding of the, of the sacrifices that you have to make. Um, you don't, um, and, and success can be defined for everyone very differently. I'm, I'm not here to suggest that my success is necessarily the definition of what others think success looks like. You, you, you have to define success yourself and then recognize, you know, the, the pros and the cons that sort of come with that. For me, 
um, you know, the downside was being gone a lot when my children were younger and missing soccer games and like, wow, like, you know, it's a lot of hard work. It's a grind and you put in a lot of hours and you simply don't achieve, you know, success, at least in my definition, without working really, really hard. Um, and that comes at a cost and you just have to know what that is. Uh, and you need family that's been, you know, really supportive. And I've been fortunate to have that, but not everyone does. And so, you know, it's, um, you know, the challenges are just the, you know, the, the understanding that if you're going to pour yourself into your career and into your profession, um, you know, you're going to put in a lot of hours. Um, and, and that's just a, a fact of life that any entrepreneur would tell you that it comes at a, it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of, of time and energy. And you have these crazy harebrained ideas. You take lots of criticism and attacks mm -hmm. from, you know, people that you respect who are telling you you're crazy. And, and like, that's not always like fun and easy. So you have to have, you have to learn to grow thick skin. Yeah, and I remember you have five kids, right? So yeah. how uh, how old is the eldest, John? Uh, the oldest is now 23 and is married. What? And um, <laughs> I may, well, not may, I will be a grandfather in like another month uh, for oh, the first time. And, uh, so and my young. youngest, youngest mm -hmm. is 12. So it's still, it's still a very busy uh, time of, uh, busy time of life with kids. Well, congratulations. That's um my my daughter is 12 years old, but that's amazing. I didn't know that that's 20s, right? 23 or yeah. wow, that's really that's good. Um, you are really right with the travel, with the success, and you need lots of time for the business, but they are so grow so fast and you miss those those precious time. But luckily, I will, we say, have is I, I will say as I get older, I'm missing less and less. So you, you learn to quickly make up for time lost. And so, um, you know, uh, the good news is I'm at a stage of my career now where, you know, and this has been the good news of COVID, you know, travel has sort of come to a halt for, for a lot of us. And so, you know, I've been able to do a lot of meetings virtually where otherwise I would be gone. And I'm uh, thankful that, uh, you know, I'm at a stage now where I'm missing very few things uh, that my kids are involved in, which is wonderful. Yes, try to catch up. Lots of activities now we can do virtually, back-to-back -back meeting, but sure. still at least you're home, right? Yes. And that's a little bit of blessing there in some ways um, with uh, almost now three years with that. And then we're able to continue a little bit part of it even if we can travel, you know? Sure. So thank you. That's amazing. And I remember you have also one question about what tips are you going to share? Like, books something to read because i know that what inspires you what you read influence you to be very successful right now yeah no it's a great question um and you know i could i could give a whole you know sort of book list i think you know as a healthcare provider i think you know my good colleague and friend uh, larry benz wrote the book called the care um, you know, if I had it to do over as a clinician, I would focus a lot more of my development in the non-cognitive skills. Um, I spent, you know, 10 years learning how to, you know, manipulate and mobilize, you know, every joint in the body and, you know, be the very best with my hands-on skills that I could. And, and that was time very well spent. Um, but you know, the non-cognitive, you know, the empathy, the caring, the compassion, motivational interviewing, all of the uh, so-called, sometimes they're called soft skills. I, I don't like the word soft skills. Non-cognitive is probably better. They're anything but soft. They're incredibly effective. You know, being able to communicate to your patients and, and help them understand the nature of pain and all of those things is just as valuable as the skills that we provide hands-on. And I think Larry does a great job in called to care and outlining, you know, how best to care for patients uh, when it comes to uh, those non, you know, those non, you know, cognitive uh, skills. So if I had to, you know, leave one recommendation, I would say that would probably be the, the one I would, I would offer. That's great. Thank you. I will connect with Dr. Larry. Um, that's really interesting. It's more on like, um, 
body language itself, you know, that you're not talking, but you see the compassion. It's like in the patient, and that's very important for us, patient interaction. You don't keep treating and you see your patient depressed. You really need to be in their mind why they're not having a non-compliance during the session, you know, and that's really um, non-cognitive thing. That's really good, and especially some mental health awareness awareness right now in the month of May. That's really amazing. Thank you so much for all these tips. Thank you so much for connecting with us, and I really appreciate your time. So last question as a physical therapist, we have listeners as well as a balance and falls support group. What will be your best tip? I'm, I'm sure you miss treating some of our patients, especially with geriatrics or anybody who's listening to prevent falls and improve balance, John? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And I will probably answer the question more generally than specifically. Um, you know, to take care of patients, we have to take care of ourselves first. Um, patients, regardless of their age, I think want to see providers that are living the essence of who that they are asking their patients to be. Um, and if we're wanting our patients to exercise and to do the kinds of things that will help them mitigate, for example, you know, falls in their elderly years, we as their provider have to be healthy ourselves. We have to look the part. We have to feel the part. We have to talk the part. We have to represent uh, the example of what we're asking our patients to do. Um, and so uh, we have to take care of ourselves first. I think of the example of, you know, uh, if you're in an airplane with a, uh, you know, a, a, a child next to you and, you know, um, the oxygen mask come down, they tell you to put the mask on your face first. Um, I view healthcare in the same way. You've got to put your mask on uh, first um, uh, before you can, um, you know, really take care of the individual on the other side because they're looking at us to be the example of health. And if we want to optimize health of our patients, we have to represent that ourselves. Thank you very much. That's a great reminder. I remember Dr. Dale Avers. She told me that like I, I am living of what I'm saying to my patient. Even my mom, she's on her, I think she's 80s at that time. And then she's really still able to do a treadmill of some sort. And she's flexible, Dr. Dale Avers, and doing lots of exercise still on her age. And she's still very young, but she's she retired recently. So I super agree with you. And that's a tough reminder for everybody, knowing that everything now is computer, very sedentary, and we're just educator, but we really need to be physically fit and represent the therapy itself. So thank you so much. That's a hard uh, shot there to all our clinicians. So we need to do our own exercises to do hydration. I'm guilty with that uh, hydration. I keep saying, oh, prevent UTI, drink water. And I'm a home health therapist, John. And then I'm not, I'm not always drinking half day already. I'm still, my water is still there. And then I'm learning that the more you drink water, the more you will have a lean mass and everything. And sometimes I'm educating. Oh, guys, drink water and then uh, you will see. <laughs> so something like that. And I really um careful with that too. So thank you so much for this eye opener. All the tips that you gave to us, all the resources from the EIM and some of the different providers like Confluent and Fit for Work. So we appreciate you. And then one of your last remark and how can we connect with you, John? Yeah, probably the best way. Uh, my email is uh, john, J-O-H-N, at E-I-M-P-T dot com. And uh, my cell phone, if you uh, want to text, uh, is 210-364-7410. Uh, you can find me online. Happy to connect. Love to converse with uh, motivated, eager uh, you know, therapists around the world. So happy to support and help however I can. Thank you so much. This is amazing. You really give your phone number, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I put it out there. It's online anyway, but I'm serious. If you text me or uh, call me, I'm uh, if I don't answer the call, I, uh, I'm pretty good about getting back. 
That's wonderful. And the best way to connect with the EIM if they're really interested in the different courses certification is the link itself of the EIM website, yeah, right? Yeah, so the main, uh, the main EIM website is evidenceinmotion.com. Uh, on social media, uh, on all the various uh, social media channels, we are at EIM team. So EIM team is who we are uh, on social media or the main Evidence in Motion uh, website. Uh, and our folks would, would love to interact and answer any questions or see how we can support your uh, development. Thank you so much. You have a great leaders there. I met majority of them and also the students. We have many colleagues doing the therapeutic pain specialty or specialist. Wonderful. And then I met the geriatric. I'm more on the geriatric side. So I'm not familiar with the other OCS, but I know lots of they're asking questions about the geriatric. So that's really great there. Dr. Heidi is there. And also I remember um, the recent one, we worked together in the CEAA, one of your directors. So thank you so much for all these great resources, John. We appreciate you. All right. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. It's another great, thanks God, it's Thursday. And we have another physical therapist turned entrepreneur and a great innovators that helps us to invest in ourselves and help our clients too. Thank you for listening and have a great day. All right, guys, bye for now.